Polycarp was bishop in Smyrna, where the Apostle John appointed him. He wrote a letter to the Philippians around A.D. 135 and was martyred in A.D. 155. Polycarp was converted by the Apostles and was a personal student of the Apostle John. His knowledge of the scriptures is clearly evident. Nearly every other phrase is a quotation of or a reference to scripture. Polycarp was an overseer in Smyrna at the same time when John was writing to that church in Revelation chapter 2. He was a friend of Ignatius and Papias, both of whom also knew the Apostle John. Arrhenius was one of Polycarp's students. In A.D. 135, he wrote a letter to the Philippians to encourage good works. In the letter, Polycarp speaks about Paul's letter to the Philippians. He writes, Neither I, nor any other such one, can come up to the wisdom of the blessed and glorified Paul, when among you he accurately and steadfastly taught the word of truth in the presence of those who were then alive. When absent from you, he wrote letters to you. If you carefully study, you will find it to be the way of building yourselves up in the faith which has been given to you. This faith is followed by hope and preceded by love towards God, Christ, and our neighbor. Around A.D. 155, Polycarp went to Rome and had a dispute with the bishop of Rome, Anicetus, concerning when to celebrate Pascha, that is, Jesus Christ's resurrection. Polycarp and the rest of Asia Minor celebrated it on Nisan 14, regardless of the day of the week. Anicetus and the church in Rome celebrated it on the first Sunday after Nisan 14. In the end, neither of them convinced the other to change, yet they remained in full fellowship with one another. In A.D. 155, at the age of 86, Polycarp refused to swear by the fortune of Emperor Antonius Pius. He was then burned at the stake. Christian witnesses who accompanied him from Smyrna recorded his martyrdom. About Polycarp, pre nicene Christians wrote, The Ephesians from Smyrna salute you, along with Polycarp, the bishop of Smyrna. The blessed Polycarp was the twelfth person who was martyred in Smyrna. However, he occupies a place of his own in the memory of everyone. In fact, he is everywhere spoken of by the pagans themselves. He was not only a renowned teacher, but he was also a preeminent martyr. Polycarp also was instructed by the apostles, and he spoke with many who had seen Christ. Not only was he appointed by apostles as bishop of the church of Smyrna in Asia, I also saw him in my early youth, for he lived a very long time. When he was a very old man, he gloriously and most nobly suffered martyrdom and departed this life. He had always taught the things which he had learned from the apostles, and which the church has handed down, and which alone are true. I can remember also how he would speak of his familiar relations with John, and with the rest of those who had seen the Lord. I remember how he would call their words to remembrance. Whatever things he had heard from them respecting the Lord, both with regard to his miracles and his teachings, Polycarp would recount them all in harmony with the scriptures, having in that manner received it from the eyewitnesses of the word of life. About Polycarp himself, his life was one of utmost holiness. Other Christians showed him such honor that Polycarp was not accustomed to putting on his own shoes because others volunteered to do it for him. When officers arrived to arrest him, he immediately offered them food. When he heard that they had come, he went down and spoke with them. Immediately, in that very hour, he ordered that something should be set before them to eat and drink, as much as they cared for, while he beseeched them to allow him an hour to pray without disturbance. When they allowed him to leave, he stood and prayed, being full of the grace of God, so that he could not cease for two full hours, to the astonishment of them that heard him, so that many who had come against such a godly and venerable old man began to repent. In summary, he was not merely an illustrious teacher, but also a preeminent martyr, whose martyrdom all desired to imitate, having been altogether consistent with the gospel of Christ. 
through patience, and having overcome the unjust governor, and thus acquired the crown of immortality, he now, with the apostles and all the righteous in heaven, rejoicingly glorify God, even the Father, and blesses our Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior of our souls, the governor of our bodies, and the shepherd of the universal church throughout the world.